Hi everyone, Bob Mesa Comer here. Welcome to the show. Say, listen, we're, we're getting just a ton of phone calls, a ton of responses and stuff to our new tournament circuit. And I want to take a few minutes today to divulge some of the information that, well, may not be seen or heard or talked about yet. There's been a lot of things happening on our side of the on our side of the dock, if you will. So that being said, before we jump into that, though, I want to tell you about some of the people who make what we do possible. Let's talk a little bit about razor rods, folks. Feel the difference. If you haven't fished a razor rod yet, chances are what you're fishing, well, it might seem dull. And then, of course, we're going to talk a little bit about Grim Reaper lures. You guys, you double-digit fishermen, you big fish fishermen out there, you're throwing the half-ounce, typical half-ounce spinnerbait for bass. Check out the half-ounce series at Grim Reaper. I think you will be awesomely impressed. And then we can't go anywhere without talking about Jim Grant and Grant Rods. Now, most of you know that we use the Big Dog Rod when we're fishing muskies, but he has a brand new Carbon Core series coming out called EXT. I think you want to look it up. And then, how about you guys out there that run across the lake or down the highway and you lose that cover on your graph? Well, they're expensive. But a friend of ours, Jim Gracca, CG Straps, has come out with a remedy, a way to keep those things on the boat, folks. All very important. And I think if you take just a couple of minutes and, and kind of support the sponsors who support us, I think it would be greatly appreciated. Let's talk a little bit, like I said, about the tournament themselves, okay? Because I want to walk you through some of the nuances, all right? Let's take a look at what we're talking about. We're going to be using a feature called the Real Live Well. The Real Live Well allows our judges in the boat, yes, a judge in every boat, allows them to weigh your fish. If it's a one pound minimum, and it's got to be a one pound minimum, it can't be a half ounce under, one pound minimum will weigh and will score to your total no fish, no catch limit. No catch limit. Um, the in-boat officials, uh, there'll be a sudden, daily sudden death qualifiers. And by that me mean, uh, there's going to be a field. Let's assume for a second that, uh, that there's a full field, 150 boats in everything except the Minnesota event, which will happen in August. Everything else is scheduled at 150 boats. So let's assume for a second we have a full field. That full field will fish 30 boats a day. 30 boats a day. Out of that, the top six of each day will move on to an automatic berth to our top gun. That's where the money is, folks. That's where you really, really want to get there. Um, big fish money goes out on Saturday. First place on a full field, folks, $40,000. And you know something? That $40,000 didn't take you five or $6,000 to get there. You got to that $40,000 spot by beating a very small number of people at a very cost-effective entry fee. $850 is our team entry fee plus a processing fee to run it through the credit cards. You can mail checks, but that being said, $850. Split that out by two people, four and a quarter. That's not, that's not a lot of money when you start talking about fishing for $40,000 first place. We're really excited about seeing what's coming. And, you know, we've talked to a lot of anglers here in the last, oh, say, two weeks since we put the site up. We talked to a lot of anglers that said, man, I'm going to change the way I fish. Because instead of hunting that six and seven and possibly a 10-pound fish in some of these systems, well, now they got to talk about numbers. And they got to talk about them fishing in a different way. Are we going to see finesse fishing come back to be the thing? Are we going to see... Uh, guys that get on schools of fish and put 30 in a boat in short order, all possible, all possible. Now, this year's tournaments start out in Minnesota. They start out in August, and we've got teams already coming in in Minnesota, Tennessee, Florida, and other states that are kicking in, starting to come in the door. We're looking for full fields if we can get them, 150 boat fields. Minnesota is going to be a 50 boat field this year because of the way we chose the lakes, the way we're doing things. So there will only be 10 boats on the water each day for the Minnesota event, where everything else will have 30 on the water each day. And Minnesota, the top two at the end of each day will move on to the berth at the championship, the top gun on Saturday. Like I said earlier, there will be six of you folks going from those daily competitions to the top gun on Saturday. Um, right now, we're putting out proposed sites and 
things of that nature because in some places we're just ahead of schedule. We can't even put in for our final times and dates yet because of the way the states uh, schedule their tournaments. But let's be talking about it. Watts Bar is coming up here in October. Watts Bar in Tennessee, that's coming up in October. We're going back to Watts Bar in May of 2022 where I've been told that we're going to see some giant fish come in. And that again, what do we say here? What if a guy gets on eight of those double digit fish? Uh, wow, it's going to be pretty cool. So with that being said, let me walk you through some of the things that we're doing on our side. I want to introduce you to the people who make it work. If you go to www.teamfishingcircuit.com, you're going to meet our staff. These are the people that we admire. These are the people we put in place to make decisions, to make sure we run as smooth as we possibly can. I'll be at each and every event. Casey Wise, who is our Vice President of Operations, will certainly be there. She's the one you probably communicate with the most when you call the office. And Dawn, well, Dawn's her assistant. And Dawn's an assistant actually to everybody. She kind of takes care of everything. And Mike, well, he's been around our tournaments for as long as I can remember. And that's going to bring up one more thing that I want to talk to you about. And that's a program that we have in place. I'm going to slide up here so you can see what we're talking about. But before we get into it, I want to tell you a little bit about what we're doing. We have in place what's called the Ambassador Program. So we have people coming forward who say, I want to be your ambassador. Now, what is an ambassador? An ambassador is somebody that is in the industry to a degree. A tournament fisherman, could be a club president, uh, could be just anybody that's a socially connected to the sport that has a presence on the internet. Everybody knows that today's social media is, is big. So the more you have in that, that wheelhouse in terms of social media, the better off you are. But let's take a look. Jim Gracca is our Tennessee ambassador, and he is cutting a rug, folks. I'm telling you, he is going to fill that tournament. You watch. He's pretty crazy. And then we got Jason Foster in Mississippi. Jason and I have been on the phone a number of times. I'm going to tell you, there's probably no more polite gentleman that I've talked to than Jason Foster, with the exception of maybe Buddy Gross. So I'm looking very much forward to working with Jason as we go forward. And Ross Myers down in Florida. Ross and I were on the phone yesterday. And there's just a lot of things that Ross has got in terms of ideas moving forward with what we're doing. And you see that spot over there that says your picture here? Well, if you've ever thought about being in the industry, if you've ever thought about being part of a tournament, if you've ever thought about promoting and helping somebody grow, well, this is your chance to not only do it, but you can also be rewarded. That's key. Before we jump off of this page, I want you to hear what I'm saying. We need officials in every boat on a full tournament. We need 30 officials in the boat each day. We're looking for schools, colleges, groups. We're looking for people who might be able to bring forward those people to put them in the boats. They don't have to be fishermen. They can read a scale. They can record the information and they can be an honest judge in the boat. That being said, if you're an institution, if you're a school, and if you bring that group, let's say for instance, uh, let's say for instance in in St. John's River, uh, our first March tournament in St. John's River, let's say for instance that you're part of a school group down there, and you say, hey, I've got 30 guys that'll do this, 30 school students, you know, you know, maybe 30 college students, maybe 30 of a of a college fishing team or a high school fishing team, yeah, they'd love to do this. Well, tell you what, folks, on a full field, you're going to walk away with between ten and $15,000 for your efforts. That's going to be donated back to your school or your institution. So keep that in mind. While you're listening to this, dial your friends, dial the people who are in the industry that might want to be judges in the boat and have them get a hold of us. Over at www.teamfishingcircuit.com, you'll find the information that you need to make that all possible. It's inside the website. It's pretty easy to get to. It's under the jobs category. So go take a look at the jobs category for the ambassadors and for the in-boat official judges. Both of those two things we need to fill. We're looking for strong relationships with both, whether it's a judge or whether it's an ambassador to make what we're doing grow. And I'll tell you why. We've got the East Division set up right now, folks. 15 tournaments in the East Division in 22. 
two going on this year. First one being in Minnesota, second one being in October at, in, at Watts Bar in Tennessee. But what happens in 23? Well, if we make this thing fly, we'll have a West Division coming out. We've had anglers call us from Nebraska, Louisiana, Arkansas, Missouri, Texas. After seeing what we're doing and ask, where's ours? Well, they're coming, folks. Let's get the support that we need to make the East Division a success. And right behind it, we'll launch the West Division. So that being said, let me walk you through a simple mapping, if you don't mind, to give you an idea where our tournaments are going. Okay, this is critical. You'll note, too, that some of these dates and stuff that you see on here are proposed. They're proposed because, well, quite frankly, we're ahead of the schedule in some places in order to put schedules together. I'm going to let this recording loop a little bit so you can see it. There's a lot going on on the map. We start way down in Florida, folks, as we fish down in Lake George. And out of Lake George, we go up to North Carolina, where we'll fish the Sharon Harris Reservoir. If you don't know anything about that fishery, again, we're going to be seeing some big fish out of there. Then we go to South Carolina, where, again, everybody's hopped up to fish those South Carolina waters. After South Carolina, we find ourselves April 11th through the 16th in Georgia at Lake Sydney Lanier. Now, we're working on that right now. I was on the phone with the fisheries people yesterday trying to lock in our spot. And then we head to Gunnersville. April 18th through the 23rd in Gunnersville, you can expect some super catches. From there, we go to Mississippi, where Jason Foster is going to be heading up that ambassadorship. So get a hold of Jason. His phone number is over on the website. I showed it to you earlier. Get a hold of Jason and let him know, or he can answer the questions for you. He's a local guy down there, and he'll help make it work. After that, folks, guess what? We're at Watts Bar for our second Watts Bar tournament. We are so excited to go back into Tennessee. The Tennessee audience has received what we're doing in a very big way. After that, after Tennessee, we go to Kentucky. On May 9th, we'll be fishing Lake Cumberland. And I'm telling you, you want to be there. You want to graduate from whatever you're doing to the upper lengths, the upper, the upper register, if you will, of the sport. This is a good way to do it. Listen, if you're a bass fisherman and, and you're looking to, well, supplements your income or even make an income in bass fishing, you're going to find out that $5,000 entry fees, well, they're not that uncommon. Three to 5000 is probably the norm. That being said, we're letting you come in or we're inviting you to come in to fish our tournaments for $850 team entry. That's two people. You split that four and a quarter a piece. Man, that's cost effective to take a shot at $40,000 on a full field. You bet. So that being said, when we leave out of Kentucky, we go to Minnesota. When we get into Minnesota, we're going to Mille Lacs. Now, if you don't know anything about Mille Lacs Lake, you should probably listen up. Mille Lacs Lake is a huge big fish fishery and tons of fish in it. I mean, just tons. From that, we go over to Michigan. From Michigan, we go to Ohio at Sandusky. From Sandusky, we go down into Indiana. From Indiana, we go to Illinois where we'll fish the Chain of Lakes. I fished tournaments on the Chain of Lakes back in the early 80s with the CBFA, and that fishery is sprawled out. There's a lot of spaces to fish, and there's a lot of serious fishermen in Illinois. From there, we go to Pool 8 on the Mississippi River, and then back to Minnesota where we'll fish Minnetonka. For those of you who have followed BASS over the years, remember a top 100 or a top 150 coming into Lake Minnetonka in Minnesota? It's because it's an incredible fishery. That's our circuit. That's what we're putting together. What we're asking you to do, though, folks, is we're asking you to get on board. We're asking you to get involved with what we're doing. And if you would, come out and help us. Help spread the word. Help enter the tournaments. Do things of that nature. Help us grow. And even if you're not a passionate tournament fisherman, it never hurts to say, hey, did you hear about this tournament? I heard yesterday uh, a gentleman called me up and we were talking and he said he was in the locks someplace in one of the states that were holding tournaments. He was locking through from one spot to another. And there was a couple of anglers in the locks saying, hey, did you hear about that team tournament coming? The guy said, no. He says, you ought to look into it. They're paying $40,000 on a full field for first place. I don't know if we have his entry fee in here yet or not, but I know entry fees are coming in and that's key. So with that being said, this is Bob Mason Comer. I want to say thanks for listening to what I have to say today. We did not cover it all by any stretch of the imagination, but we covered the high points. A no-limit tournament. 
a team tournament. $850 to enter the thing. And you can fish as catch as many as you can catch because that judge in the boat is going to weigh those fish and release them for you. It is what it is. It is teamfishingcircuit.com. So with all that being said, I, I just want to say one more thing in closing, if I could. Again, I wish everybody a pleasant and safe 4th of July week weekend. Enjoy your family. Enjoy the festivities. Enjoy the fireworks. But enjoying and remembering this. Our forefathers fought to give us the freedoms that we have in the United States. We need to pay close attention to that. Because if we don't, those freedoms that we have, well, they may not be here anymore. This is Bob Mesa, Mesa Comer saying God bless. We'll see you guys at one of our tournaments.